My name is Corrine Gardner. I'm a real estate professional here in Middle Tennessee, and I am with Parks Realty. Parks. Hey, Miss Cynthia. So glad to see y'all. All of you, thank you for being here. So, today we're going to talk about home buying, and that is something that is very near and dear to both of our heart, me being a real estate professional and Danielle being a lender. This is the woman that you want to see. This is, this is the key to success in the home buying process. Danielle, tell us a little bit about that. My job is to get you guys money. If you guys want to buy a house, you need money. And my job is to help go find that money. Yes. Uh, what I do is I look at your finances, see what you can afford, um, and help get you pre-qualified so that you can go out and find the house that you want. The worst thing you want to do is go out house shopping and find this beautiful house and fall in love, only to discover that it's out of your budget. Mm. <laughs> um, you know, I come. I one of the things I ask people is, um, what are you comfortable spending per month? on your mortgage and not necessarily what purchase price you want to be in. Um, and there's usually a, a decent disconnect with right. people wanting, um, you know, $1,300 mortgage but want a $3,000, $300,000 house. Mm -hmm. um, they kind of get disappointed when they see, oh wait, that's what that gets me. Right. Uh, so it's important to know what exactly you qualify for and what, pr what price point um, monthly payment wise what that looks like in, ter in terms of purchasing a house so I hope you get all that stuff figured out <laughs> good good now you said something that was so key Danielle you talked about the price point versus what people are comfortable with in a monthly payment we'll get back to that in a few minutes because I want to definitely dive into when it comes to home ownership what should we be looking for um, Definitely, you want to find a, a great uh, real estate professional that's going to help you along the process. And that will be me. <laughs> I'll be willing to definitely walk you along the process to help you find that home that you're looking for. But I think it's Im important that we find you a good lender who can help you, help you get the money that you need with the right price point and the monthly affordability that you need. But before we even get to pricing and monthly affordability, we want to make sure that you can qualify for the home first. And that's one of the first steps because you never want to put the cart before the horse. You never want to go out trying to find a home, looking for homes, doing home searches, and we don't have any money. Does that make sense, guys? You want to make sure that your credit score is where it needs to be. Can you talk to us a little bit? Because it, she will be the subject matter expert on all of, on this portion of it. And you want to make sure that your financials are in place when it comes to gearing up to be a homeowner. Everyone wants to own a home, and we're in a great season in our lives right now where we home ownership is right at our grips. But we have to have the tools that we need to be successful. Tell us a little bit about what we need, Danielle, and where our credit score needs to be, and how do we position ourselves to be homeowners? Yeah, definitely. So I've talked to many people, and there's a common misconception that you need to have perfect credit to be able to purchase a home, um, that you need to be you know, high 700s, or you need 20% down to purchase a house. Okay. Um, those are completely inaccurate. Okay. We have loan programs um, that go as low as a 580 credit score. Um, one of the biggest things that affects your credit um, is going to be your debt to income ratio and your payment history. You can have a 700 credit score, but if you've had um, a late payment within the last 12 months, you may not be able to qualify, even though your score is where it should be. Mm -hmm. um, there's more things to it than just the number. What's on the actual credit report makes a big difference as well. Um, with that, negative stuff on there will not necessarily mean you can't qualify. Um, I've qualified people with bankruptcies on their credit report that are currently in bankruptcy mm. um, or fresh out of bankruptcy. I've qualified people with repossessions, medical debt. Um, the biggest portion, the biggest factor for those is going to be how far back they were um, and the amount on it. Um, if you have, let's say you have a repossession, and you owed $10,000 on the repossession, and it's far back on your credit, it's not within 
the last 12 months because you don't want those late payments on there. Mm -hmm. um, but the way we calculate that, that's not a no, we would just calculate 1% of that loan amount that's left over towards your debt to income ratio. Um, so you can still purchase even though you don't have per perfect credit. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely making sure that you have um, decent credit mm -hmm. is, is definitely helpful. Um, and I work with people that have great credit and that don't. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things that I love to do is to help get people where they aren't ready yet to where they are ready. Um, and I'll sit with you, come up with a game plan, um, walk you through step by step how to get your scores up. Uh, the only thing that I ask is that you actually follow through right. and get uh, follow the plan to get those scores up. Uh, and the ones that have has definitely um, increased their scores. Most recently I had someone uh, within the last month, their score jumped 100 points um, wow. by following the uh, instructions that I gave them. And now they're ready to go purchase and they'll have zero down when they uh, when they purchase. Wow, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. That is, did y'all hear that? Did y'all hear that news? 100 points in one month. So, does it always work that way? It, does, it does depend on what's on your credit report, mm -hmm. um, but there's Lots of little tips and tricks to get those scores up. <laughs> Good. And we got the tips and tricks for you. Listen, um, talk a little, can you tell us a little bit about credit score? Because a lot of people don't know the significance of a credit score, even what it means to have good credit. Talk mm -hmm. to us a little bit about that when it comes to home buying, how credit is so important and how that score. And talk to us about, you know, because we have credit karma. We have all these different agencies that have credit scores, but some of them are inaccurate. Tell mm -hmm. us the importance of connecting with a lender to find out what that credit score is. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I'm going to go back just a little bit. The factors that make up your credit score. Mm -hmm. um, some people are afraid of credit. They don't want to get their to um, get credit cards or anything like that, which is fine. And we can actually do. Uh, mortgages with a zero credit score but having a zero credit score is very difficult to get because you can't have anything on your credit to do that mm -hmm. um, so the, it was all right, there we go there we go sorry <laughs> about that guys uh, the purpose behind your credit score is basically showing the bank that you can be responsible with someone else's money that's it um, mm -hmm. you know they want to see that you can borrow money and then you're responsible for paying it back mm -hmm. um, Credit score does not affect, usually, how much you can qualify for, um, but it does affect your interest rate. Mm -hmm. um, and that part can definitely affect what you end up paying, or what you can qualify for. Um, not usually a whole lot, but it's, you know, it could be between, you know, another $10,000, give or take, depending on what that interest rate is. Um, so it's important, it is important to have a good credit score so that you can get a better interest rate right. and get um, a more affordable mortgage mm -hmm. for that. Um, things that affect your credit score, the biggest one is late payments. Um, if you are late, do not worry. Uh, one thing that I recommend, if you have a small amount of a late payment with something mm -hmm. that's in collection, mm -hmm. I try to encourage my buyers to um, gather that money together and then call, your, call the company that you're behind on and say, hey, I'm trying to buy a house and I need this negative stuff off my credit. Mm -hmm. If I make a lump sum payment, will you agree to take this completely off of my credit? Wow. Um, and believe it or not, they do. Wow. <laughs> Some do, not all of them, but they do. Um, and getting just getting that one little thing taken off will boost your score a lot. Um, so late payments is one of them. Mm -hmm. Credit util utilization. Okay. Um, if you have a $500 credit, credit limit, mm -hmm. you do not want to keep it close to that 500. You want to have it um, no more than 10%. Um, so $50 max on a $500 credit score uh, or credit limit. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, so you want to make sure that you're keeping those payments low and you're paying them on time. Good. One of the things that I recommend is to, um, you know, use your credit card, set it up for Amazon, not Am your Amazon Prime payment or Hulu, Netflix, and just have it for that and pay it off. Because what that's doing is it's showing that you're making the payments, 
but then it avoids that temptation of going too crazy with your credit card. That's <laughs> good. Hey guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. This is only part one and I'm super excited to present part two. Please leave me your comments below and let me know if you have any questions. And also, if you are looking to buy or sell a home and you're not in the Middle Tennessee area, don't worry about it. I got you covered. I am able to work with you outside of the state and outside of the country. So please feel free to contact me. Email me at kareengartner12 at gmail.com. I look forward to speaking with you soon. See you in the next video. Bye.